If you want to learn more about Juno Security, sign up for our Juno Security or Advanced Juno Security courses. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the courses in the keyword search box. You can also see the complete Juno Security Learning Path at juniper.net slash learning paths. Now it's time for your Learning Byte. Welcome to another Juniper Learning Byte session. My name is Udo Steiniger. And today I'm going to talk about the Juniper Asterix IPsec traffic selector feature. In IPsec, there are challenges with route-based VPNs when we are using proxy ID. For example, when more than one proxy ID is needed in a VPN tunnel, or when a configuration needs to support remote devices from third-party vendors that either use policy-based configurations or multiple proxy IDs themselves. In any case, there's no enforcement of data onto a configured proxy ID. Therefore, once the route-based VPN tunnel is up, we can route basically anything into that tunnel. The solution to these issues is a feature called Traffic Selector. It is supported both on the branch and data center as asterisks. What happens is that a unique Ike phase two security association will be created for each traffic selector configured and thus binding only allowed traffic into the tunnel. Traffic selector supports all four possible tunnel modes, IP version four and IP version four, IP version six and IP version six, IP version four and IP version six, and IP version 6 in IP version 4. The current limitations are that about 200 traffic selectors per VPN tunnels are supported and only route based VPNs can be configured with traffic selector. Eventually a static route for each remote traffic selector subnet will be added automatically in one of two ways. When we configure established tunnels immediately then this will be done right after the phase two negotiations or otherwise after committing the configuration. When we configure the bind interface ST0, then all required address families, that is IP version four and or IP version six must be configured either when a tunnel needs to be established for the address family or a traffic selector for a particular address family is configured. Now let's check all this out based on an implementation example. We want to enable the red network on Asterix 1 to have a connection over a VPN tunnel to the blue and orange networks sitting behind Asterix 2. And additionally, we want to enable the blue network on Asterix 1 only to be allowed to connect to the remote blue network behind the SRX2. Now, assuming that we have a working Ike config, so everything under edit security Ike is complete, and we just need to configure the IPsec part of our security configuration, then our red to blue and red to orange VPN connection using traffic selector would look like, like this, that on the left-hand side, we have the SRX1, and on the right-hand side, we have SRX2. And for each of the two communication paths that are allowed from red to blue and from red to orange, we have two unique traffic selectors. TS1 is handling the connection between red and blue, and TS2 is handling the connection between red and orange. You will see that on SRX2, on, on the right-hand side, the traffic selectors TS1 and TS2 are just mirroring the left-hand side configuration crosswise. Please note that orange to blue connectivity and vice versa is not permitted here. Then we wanted to have a second set of connections 
from the left hand blue network side to the remote hand blue network side on the right hand side. And in order to do so, we need a third traffic selector in our example called TS3, which handles on both ends the connection from the blue network on the left hand side, which is here 10.20 slash 16, to the right hand side 20.10 slash 16. And the matching configuration for the right hand side is also depicted here. Please note that still orange to blue and vice versa is not permitted because we don't have any traffic selectors matching to that pattern. We can verify our configuration with show security IPsec inactive tunnels detail and then we see one tunnel with three kind of connection patterns that is traffic selector one, traffic selector two and traffic selector three. For each one of them, we see our networks for the local side, which should be able to talk to, to the remote side. For example, TS1 talks between the networks 10.10/16 and the remote network 20.10/16. The traffic selectors two and three are just reflecting their own configs, which permits the traffic as defined in previous slides. Please note that every of these three traffic selectors are bound to the interface ST0.1. Now, assuming that our IPsec tunnels are up now, we see with the command show security IPsec security association detail that we have still and VPN called VPN1. And for the sake of brevity, I just display here the output of traffic selector one. So we see the local gateway config and the remote gateway config and the traffic patterns for the local and the remote networks. Please note that also our automatic route for the remote network matching on traffic selector one is being added as a static route. You see here 20.10 slash 16. There are also two kind of new syslog messages being added with the, with the feature. The one is KMD underscore VPN underscore up underscore alarm underscore user, which signals when a VPN tunnel using a certain traffic selector is coming up. And our egg example here depicted traffic selector one. And the counterpart message when and phase two SA is going down for traffic selector one, then we see the new syslog message KMD underscore VPN underscore down underscore alarm underscore user. So let's jump in and into a practical example that we had before. So we have asterisk one on the left hand side and asterisk two on the right hand side. And we're going to check out each of the configuration parts. First, the interfaces, configuration interfaces. So you see here, we have basically three active int interfaces. The first is GE003, which is our WAN or internet tracing interface. GE004 has a number of units that, that we're using, the blue network, the red network, and another vanilla network that we're using just for demonstration purposes that we can push basically any traffic into the tunnel. And of course, we have our secure tunnel interface that we need for our route based VPNs. The next part is the zone binding of the interfaces, which you see here. We have basically just two zones, the trust zone and the untrust zones with the relevant interfaces bound here. Then next is the security policies. Which is straightforward. 
within the context from zone trust to zone untrust, we permit basically anything. Just to have a very simple example that we can use for the demonstration purposes without traffic selector, right? Then of course the IC and IPsec config. You see that the IC configuration standard contains a standard proposal and straightforward main mode policy and a gateway config. Then the same for IPsec here. Also a straightforward IPsec config containing a proposal, a policy that binds the IPsec policy and a VPN tunnel called VPN1, which binds the ST0 in interface here, binds the Ike gateway config and binds the IPsec policy and brings up the tunnels immediately. Now let's see whether we have a working IPsec security association. So you see basically we have and working IPsec SA here. And then we want to see what our routing looks like. So we have a default route pointing out through the one interface to the service provider and then 20 slash eight into the tunnel. So basically this is our setup here. Now we can test what we can ping through the tunnel. So first of all, I'm just going to test the red to blue network connectivity ping 20.10.0.1. And we're sourcing this ping from 10.10.0.1, count five. So basically we see that the ping works. Next, we are going to check out the red to orange ping 20.20.0.1 sourcing again from 10.10.01. Again, this is working as expected. And then from blue to blue, 20.20.0.1. 10.0.1 coming from sourcing 10.20.0.1 count three. Right, and now this just wild network just to show that basically anything can go through the tunnel as long as we have an active route. And this is ping.20.99.0.1 sourcing from 10.99.0.1, count two. You see, this works. The next step that we are going to make and work in configuration with traffic selector, meeting the requirements as we want them. Okay, and in our next example, we want to have our setup adjusted to only allow the traffic as we have laid, laid out here, red network on left hand side to blue and orange on, on the right hand side and blue on the left to blue to the right and nothing else. And we're going to do that using traffic selector. Now let's first check out our static routes, show configuration, routing up options. You see that we have on both sides only an default route pointing to the internet. Show configuration routing options, All right? Then I leave all the interface configs, zone configs, policies in place as they have been in the previous example. And we're just checking out the um, changed configuration stance of our added security IPsec VPN. And you will see that here, configuration security IPsec VPN. 
sorry, VPN one. Now you see here that we have three different traffic selectors. The first one, TS1, is the red to blue connection. The second is red to orange, and the third one is blue to blue and nothing else, right? This is the configuration. And the verification is that we want to see slash 16 routes for the remote networks 20.10 and 20.20 sitting behind SRX2, show route protocol static. You see that the two slash 16s have been added by the traffic selector feature pointing to the secure tunnel interface. Then we want to see show security IPsec security associations. And we see that we have three different security associations to the remote network here. And we want to see them in, in detail here, which of course reflects red to blue, red to orange. And then let's see. The first one here, you see for traffic sector one here, is from the 10.10 .10 to 20.10. So that's red to blue being bound to st 0.0. Then the next traffic selector, TS2, is also 10.10, .10, which is the red net, net network, going on to 20.20. .20. That's once again red to orange. And our third one, as expected, TS3, is reflecting our left-hand side 10.20 blue network to the remote blue network 20.10. Okay, now let's see whether our ping tests are going through as well. So the first ping is from the red network to the blue network. Ping 20.10.0.1 sourcing the 10.10.0.1 and exactly three packets. You see, the first one works. Now the next test will be red to orange. Ping 20.20.0.1 sourcing 10.10.0.1 count three. We expect that to work as well. And our last traffic selector goes from blue to blue, ping.20.10.0.1, sourcing from the left-hand blue network, which is 10.20.0.1, which we expect to work as, as well. And now, as a proof of concept, we want to ping for traffic patterns that are not allowed. And for that, we have our vanilla networks here. That is 20.99.0.1 coming from the local 10.99.0.1 count three. And you see, it doesn't work, right? So we have proof here that the traffic selector feature just permits the traffic between the defined local and remote networks and the static routes traffic selector is carrying automatically for. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.